You're listening to Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official podcast of Lingerie Fighting Championships. And now, here's your host, Michael Larkin! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. My name is Mike Larkin, and joining me today, folks, we talk about beauty, strength, and dominance, and a man who encompasses beauty, strength, and dominance with his photos and the amazing imagery he has of the LFC ladies, the one, the only, Mr. Richard Ember. Richard, how are you? I'm good, Mike. How are you doing? I am good. Richard, I got to say, it's been a while since I've had you on the show. We were doing it in audio format, and now we are here on video. We got the Roku. We got LFCFights.com in the VIP section. Such amazing stuff going on in the world of LFC, as well as a calendar, Pets of LFC, which kudos go to you because you were the one behind this whole creative process of what we're going to do for this calendar, sir. So it seems that I was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was with uh, Sean at a hockey game, and we were talking about what we're going to do, and the thought came to me is that most of the fighters in LFC have pets, love their pets. Why not display their pets? And that's uh, about how the game, how it came about. Well, I got to say, with how the calendar is, and folks, if you've not seen the calendar, go to lfcfights.com and check it out, VIP sec. It's one of those things, too, as well, where we've had the cars, we've had the movie theme, we have every theme but months, and now we got the pets. And I'm going to say right now, you and your dog there, Pops, which we got <laughs> in there. I got to say, such a cute dog, Richie. I love him. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we all love him. We yeah. all love him. He is a real, uh, a real handful, but a really, really lovely animal. Like uh, I've owned dogs, and he's he's up there. Yeah. Well, I will say this. First of all, the fact that it's named after your father, right? Because your father was yes. pop, pop, pop. Oh, pop. See, that's yeah. Great. Yep. Oh, I yeah. love so it. when I got him, I uh, I decided to name this one after my dad, and uh, my dad everybody used to call him Pops back home, and he's passed now. Jeez. 20 years. God bless. 20 years, a little bit. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's the main thing, too, here is we have the warmth. We have the comfort of our animals and our pets. And I'm going to say this right now. The amazing pets that we have, we have cats. We have dogs in this calendar. We have snakes. We have horses. We have pigs, even. Pigs. We have a pig. Like, pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. here's the thing richie like you had a main point as far as jolene shoot and tomiko shoot and as always jolene find us wine with her part I, I wasn't involved in jolene shoot oh my apologies tomiko yeah i wasn't involved in jolene shoot i was involved in tomiko shoot yeah Okay, so let's talk about the Tomiko one here, because first and foremost, Tomiko always looking good, always repping with January, beautiful dogs in her own right. Talk about working with Tomiko. Oh, working with Tomiko is always a charm. And the fact that she has two beagles and Pops is a beagle, yep. that just sort of brings everything together. So, you know, like, beagles are well represented in the calendar, mm -hmm. for those who are beagles fans. Um, but working with Tomiko is always a blast, working with her puppies, it was the first time I had met uh, Kenzie, the uh, female one. I had met Kaya a couple of times before that. It was the first time I met uh, I had met Kenzie, and uh, they got along famously. Animals love me more than <laughs> women, but hey. First of all, you are a sharp dressed man in your own right, Mr. Richard Ember. I will put that up you. myself. You're welcome. But Thank that's you. that's the thing too, as well, man. Like with the animals that you also get to have that's in here as well. I mean, for God's sake, pops with Jordan Jojo the Hammer Hamner, a woman who's only had one fight, but what an amazing cover that is, right? Just to see her on yeah. top of Jordan. Just to, yeah, I mean, uh, all my animals have always photobombed all my photo shoots. They just they want to be involved one way or another. Well, the fact they don't want me not paying them attention, paying somebody else attention is, of course, uh, anthema to an, a to a to an animal, to a pet. Mm -hmm. But they've always bombed all my photo shoots. And, you know, when Pops bombed the, the photo shoot with uh, Jojo, and, you know, the pictures were just so bloody cute. And Jojo and Pops got along really, really well. And, um, you know, it, it just felt natural for that to be in the calendar. Even though Jojo's only fought once, hey, it's like... It's, it's got to be. It, it is what it is, you know? 
Oh, absolutely. And I mean, with we talk about Jordan only fighting once, JoJo the Hammer Hamner. It's one of those things with her. LFC 35 had a great bout with Terry. I mean, isn't yeah. it great to see such new fighters even encompass in these calendars? It doesn't matter if they have such a hit and an influx with the audience. It makes for a hell of a time, my friend. Of course it does. Of course it does. And her fight with Terry was uh, was quite a, I don't know, I don't say a spectacular fight. I mean, both of them really went at it. And Terry she's earned the name feisty that's for sure you know she doesn't give up she fights and jojo uh went right along with her so absolutely can't argue on that agreed and here's what i gotta say about this too and i think if there's anybody else besides sean besides me and you we are like the three passionate ones with the lfc and why i mean by this is as well we like to see the girls that come in we like to see newbies we like to see the veterans there's always room not just for improvement and growth but just so many people coming in the prospect list is endless man who we got coming yeah. in for LFC 37, we got Autumn Ivy, we got Ziva Faye, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be something. I'm, I'm uh, uh, supposed to be there, supposed to be photographing it, God willing, you know. Hopefully everything goes good, and uh, it's going to be really interesting. February 14th, Valentine's Day. Yes, sir. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be hopefully one for the books. I've uh, had a little sneak preview of some pictures of where it's going to be, and mm. that is going to be something else. I mean, when you have a title like LFC 37 back to the mansion, I think with every venue that we've done, whether it be rooftop, whether it be nerd bar, whether it be Vegas, whether it be overall Sam's town and everything there, I think each and every one has made special moments, but God dang, man, we're on LFC 37 already. It's more moments yeah. to be created, Richard. <laughs> I think I started with, uh, my God, it was in the fight in Kansas. Now, what was that? 30, 20, 25 that was 20 yeah that was that's got to be 22 23 yeah 22 23 i'm thinking that's 23 that was the one where monica won the title yep yeah so that's like 14 fights now uh if my math is any good <laughs> <laughs> yes you're correct that's like 14 fights that i've uh that i photographed for the lfc so far so uh yeah that's pretty uh i'd say that's pretty impressive I, I would say so, Richie. And I mean, speaking of Monica, Monica's another one that's coming back at this one. Oh, so I heard, yeah. Yes, it's the former LFC champion from LFC 23, yeah. Like, yeah. for me, like, the, she was the judge at the last one with Mike DeTree, right. Jackson, and Veronica. Like, how fun is that going to be to see her finally get back in there after two years? That's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I think Monica was the very first fighter I fought, I shot for the very first LFC calendar, the one with the cars. Yes, that's correct. I shot, well, no, it wasn't really the one with the cars. It, uh, it, she was with her car. It wasn't the yes. car calendar, but she was with her car. She was with her green, uh, her green challenger. Mm -hmm. And that would have been the very first, um, the very first calendar shoot for the very first LFC calendar was Monica. So yeah, yeah. it's going to be, uh, it's going to be good to see her again. And I think that also, and what I, and I what I love about this, and I'll go back to the calendar for a second here, Richie, but God dang, man, what separates us, not just a little bit of MMA, a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of clothing, as LFC is known for, but the fact that the calendar, and here's why I love it, so whether in popular culture, whether it be in whatever company you have of any facet, the calendar is so important, just the merchandise, the accessory, it's the glamour, it's the glitz, but it's so fun to have in, have in your home, Richie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great to have in your home. For those of us with uh, slightly graying hair, uh, you know, we still hang up wall calendars and uh, make little notes on them, you know? <laughs> you know a, lot of, uh, a lot of you younger people use the uh, the phone and you put everything in there, but uh, no, uh, some of us still, uh, still have the old-fashioned way. All right, I'm going to take that with a little slight here, Richie, because I just... <laughs> Oh, I just turned 30 this years old here, man. But I got to say. Oh, 30 years old. My God. Oh, my God, I know. I like, <laughs> <laughs> I like to consider myself an old soul, sir. So like, <laughs> and sometimes the simplest is the easiest. You know, little notes on the calendar. You know what I'm saying? It's the easy yeah. thing. Simple thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, that's the beauty of it, man. I think that's the beauty of what encompasses LFC. And I mean, you and I, first of all, I got to say, meeting you at LFC 35 and right back to back at LFC 36 was such a pleasure to us finally get to meet Richie. I love you to death. But damn, dude, like from the photos that you took there and just from from four on, like since LFC 23, like everything that was encompassed there, I loved it. I still have some of the photos you have still saved on my computer. I love it. Uh, I, gotta, I wanted to say personally, thank you. I love what you did. Well, thank you. I uh I like I love photography. I mean to me it's uh it's a very expressive art form and it's 
contrary to popular belief with everybody with their phones, it's not that easy. <laughs> Yeah. You know? Well, we're getting that right shot. And I also equate it to like, all right, we'll do like the title of the show is Beauty, Strength and Dominance, right? I always include it to like life is an art form and we're all here to apply our crafts. The imagery that we see in a woman and how we see these spiders, you know, the overall eye, the visualization is that overall lens like you see when you take it with your camera and different images. So it all goes hand to hand in our one mindset, but also at the same time, the art that we portray. Right. Yeah. Well, very well said, Mike. Very well said. Well, that's, Very eloquent. <laughs> eh, I try, but no, that's the thing too, because here's the thing, and this is why I love you. I understand what you try to do with each and every one of your photos, whether it's an LFC event or a boxing event with rival gear and everything. Dude, you have the gear that goes with it. You have the photo. Everything that what we see from a visualization also tells a story, like what we would see on TV or something. So everything has a story to be told in it. Well, that's the whole point. Yeah. The whole point. And, you know, and to be a success in photography, and I, I used to say this when I would uh, – when I was teaching, you know, there's two types of pictures. There's the picture you take just because you want to take it and you think it's going to be a nice picture and you keep it for yourself. And there's the picture that tells the story, right? Mm -hmm. And every time you take a picture, if you want to do something with that picture, there has to be a story to be told behind it, you know? And if you, if you look, and when I used to teach photojournalism, you know, I'd say, yeah, you have your whole slew of pictures, but then you have the one, which is the money shot. You know, and that's the one that makes the front cover of the magazine, the front cover of the newspaper. Yeah, and inside are the other six or seven that are equally good, but not as impactful. And that's what you try. When you do this, you got to get that impact, that picture, that wow factor. And that's what I try to do. I try to make sure that the pictures I take have that wow factor. I succeed most of the time. I can't say I'm 100%, but I do I do think I succeed most of the time. I would say so. And I mean, from what we've had, like, and I'll say this right now, from what we've had from the last two events, and now we're going onward here, I think, and I'm going to say this right now, like in the history of the booty camps that we've done, I think you can concur because we were right there. God dang, man, LFC 36 booty camp four from Sheena and Bella Madison from the main yeah. event, Jenny and Jolene. That was one of the best doggone booty camps we've had so far. Yeah, it is. Yeah, for sure. Like, for folks, sure, for sure. And I'll say, go back and watch it. It's our last event, but like the bout that the storytelling with Sheena and Bella Madison was amazing. And they've only had two fights. That was both their second fights. Jenny and Jolene was the first time and they killed it. Like the swarm of talent, even from Carmen Valentina, especially Angelica coming all the way from Italy, like the crop here, man, every event is good, but there was something about this one that really put out like the whole drive. You know what I'm saying? That edge to it. It felt really authentic and good. Well, it was the first one back after the shutdowns. It was the first one that had people. It was the first one where people were excited to be out and about and at a sporting event because, remind me of the date again. It was the... It was May 13, 2022. May 13th, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of sporting events hadn't let people in or were letting people in on a very limited, tight basis. So it's it was just everybody happy to be around and i think that's what gave it a lot of the energy it's actually funny you bring that up because thinking about 2021 the halloween one that you and i were both at like it was good and why i mean by this is like there was people there but it wasn't the people that we had for lfc 36 because like you right. said still during covid you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah it was very limited uh you know the the fighters were allowed one person each i think it was and then there was the crew and that was about it Oh yeah, like That's LFC, it, so oh yeah, from LFC back in LFC thirty one and the, the excuse me thirty yeah thirty one excuse me wow February twenty twenty one LFC thirty one then LFC thirty five like that was just around that time period and then we get to twenty twenty two I gotta say COVID gave us the time to be very creative with what we got to do but also <laughs> but I, I mean what I mean by that is like it's hard when there's no audience because it really right. is there's no audience yeah. but at the same time. Like, I mean, Zoom, like we're doing here, has helped a lot of people. But also, at the same time, it's nice to be back to, I guess, some sense of normalcy, right? Well, that's it. And, uh, you know, Zoom is great. You know, uh, video conferencing is great. But it still misses the human touch. Yep. You know? Like, can you imagine if you were in Vegas and we were doing this, sitting at a table across from each other? Mm -hmm. How much more warm it would feel? Yes, Absolutely. 
But that's so, that's the thing too, man. Yeah. I think with what we've got in this world and what we got just in general, man, it really makes us appreciate just the moments and memories that we have in person and just in overall. And I got to say with you, Richard Ember, the moments and memories are going to be yet created once we get to Valentine's Day with some more badass photos. I mean, look at the poster. Jolene, Holly Dunaway, four-time kickboxing champion, Monica Flowerbomb Garcia, JoJo the Hammer Hamner. Oh, it's going to be a show come Valentine's Day. Let's my hope friend. so, man. Let's hope so. Keep our fingers crossed that everybody can make it and everybody is going to show up and, uh, you know, there's nothing unforeseen coming and, hey, it's going to be something. It's going to be something. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it, you know? I am as well, and I will say this as well. I also kind of equate it to, because every time I have him on the show, I also equate it to you, like how Tommy Bell does his drawings, like how you do your photos, man. I think you two have that kinship of he can pencil it, you could take the photography. It's wonderful just to see both the dynamics that we have of two talented people like yourselves, and I got to put that over strongly, Richard. Well, uh, Tommy is a great artist. Like, I can't take that away. The man has talent galore uh, when it comes to his artwork, you know? And the fact that he, I take a picture, he actually creates it from a canvas and a, and a pencil. Um, always to me is always a much more, I don't want to, wouldn't want to use the term authentic, but it certainly requires a lot more talent. And I'll give that to him. You know, it requires a lot more talent to actually take it and create what he does from it. It's, the imagination, the shading, everything that he does is just incredible. And I will say this as well, from the shading of what he does to the art, from the artistry side of things, what you do to the visualization, the picture side of things, man, I got to put over rival boxing gear him, man, because Jordan the Hammer Hamner, Joe Joe here with those boxing gloves, rival gear, healthy male teams coming, baby. New healthy male team, Whoa! yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's going to be something else now. Four teams, uh, uh, pink, black, blue, and now the healthy male, the yellow. Hey, he better start booking a lot more shows because now he's got four teams he's got to <laughs> he's got to fight through. So <laughs> at the work, Sean. Yep, I look forward to it. And like I said, every time I always love putting over your boxing gear, say rival gear, man, because you. you know, first of all, authentic. You got a great store, and everything that goes into that, it's just such a great brand, Richard. I love the rival gear stuff. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. We work hard at making sure that it's uh, is the best. You know, um, definitely. We put everything we can, every all our knowledge of boxing and martial arts is put into the gear. And we're a company that has boots on the ground in the boxing industry to make sure that we give the customers, the fighters, what they're looking for. Not what we think they're looking for. They tell us what they're looking for, and we make it a reality. You know, we've got cut men. My brother is a world-class cut man and a world-class trainer, works with the champions of today, works with Alexander Usyk. He works with uh, Vasily Lomachenko, you know, the R&D guy, uh, Luke. He works with um, Artur Betterbaev, who's fighting in a couple of weeks in England for the championship. Um, so these guys, they're out there. They're out on the field. They got, we got boots on the ground, and uh, we listen to what people say when they say new equipment. We're not like the other brands who are just, oh, look, here's a new glove. We don't know what, it, what, what the difference is between our new glove and our old glove. It just looks prettier. Uh, yeah, our gloves look pretty. Our gloves look awesome. But there's a science behind each and every one of our gloves and why we have them. And I think that goes into any product, not just variety and the overall precision and the overall crispness and what you get to do with your gloves and what have you. There has to be something that's authentic, real, and it really stands out. And I think the precision and the professionalism and everything that goes into the minor details and the minuteness and the overall specifics. Oh, Richard, I got to say, I got to give more, much props once more. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take all the props you can give. Hey, man. I'll take all the props. <laughs> It's true. Truth is truth. And I got to say, folks, with every imagery that you've seen from old and new with the LFC and just with also the boxing photos, I'm going to put over the boxing here because, Richard, you've been to a lot of fights. You've seen yes. a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things. Yeah. So a lot of great uh, photos from great memories of amazing fights. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I have uh, I just got back from the, um, the WBA uh, 100th anniversary convention. That's the World Boxing Association. It was their 100th anniversary. Uh, I just got back from their convention in Florida. They put on an amazing card. 
um, Rival was the proud uh, supplier of gloves to that card. Everybody on that card wore gloves. It was the return uh, to boxing of Sergio Martinez. Um, Maravilla. Sergio Maravilla Martinez. Um, the guy was a world champion, retired, decided he wanted to come back. He made his return. So that was great. It was great. I'm off now to uh, Panama for some more boxing. So it's a it's an enjoyable ride. It's an enjoyable ride. Well, you stay busy, Richard. You stay busy because it's always good. And yeah. I mean, also at the same time with the fact that you got the boxing, the moments and memories created from the knockouts and just taking those precision shots like we mentioned. Here's what I also love about it, too, with LFC. A little bit of MMA, a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of clothing, but boxing, kickboxing, jujitsu. There's so many different art forms and crafts here. And I look like a woman, like we mentioned before, with Holly Dunaway, like a four-time kickboxing champ getting in the LFC ring and auspices. Like, sign me up. Sex appeal. Right. Art this, but, right? but this is going to be interesting because as a kickboxer, yes, she's used, of course, to kicking and hitting in the face. Correct. And as we know, there's no strikes to the face in the LFC. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's going to be interesting to see how she's going to adapt her uh, her skill to the rules of the LFC. I mean, she's got the talent, but she could be that close to disqualification if that kick goes above the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, <laughs> glad I'm going to be there to be able to catch that. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost like, oh, my God, what was it, LFC 20 with Jenny Bloody Valentine and Riley Nuclear Norris, just right hand to the dome, but, man. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, you know, and sometimes it's intentional and, you know, sometimes it's not mm -hmm. like anything else, you know. They see what they can get away with. And it's like hockey. If I spear the guy now in the corner, is the ref going to see it? And do I get a penalty or do I get away with it and, uh, you know, and give our, our team the advantage? So, it's going to be it's going to be something i'm i'm quite curious to see how she's going to adapt you know and i've always said that when you put a boxer any boxer up against an mma fighter the boxer is going to win mm -hmm. the boxer is going to win because they're used to being hit and they know how to throw a punch right so as long as he can they can stay standing they're going to be able to beat an MMA guy. So it's going to be curious being a kickboxer, how she's going to do against some of these fighters that are more trained in MMA and wrestling and grappling than in an actual boxing. I think what's great about it too is like, like you mentioned the adaption, a lot of people that, and here's what I love about it. you and I talk about this, like with everything with LFC, everybody looks at the word L and I'm doing the L like smash my yeah. star L on her forehead <laughs> here. So, so they look at the L in lingerie for lingerie fighting championships. People gloss over the fact that they don't realize what everything that goes into it from the training and everything that goes into it. Here's how I look at it. Don't look at it for just the L. Look at just everything from the fighting. The key word there is F and fighting, folks. Fighting champions. Yeah. Just don't look uh, at it for the track. Don't don't even give me that L bullshit because excuse my language. I'm sorry. Uh, um, I was watching TV the other day. It was on. Uh, I think it was on TNT or, or TVT Turner. Uh, I was watching one of my superhero movies, and after that finished, the wrestling came on. Yes. Right? And there were. Uh, don't even ask me who was wrestling. I just know there were two female wrestlers on it. They weren't wearing anything more than what the girls of the LFC wear. Right. But because it was TNT or WBE, WWE or whatever it was, um, it's permissible. It's allowed on TV. But because you throw the L word in there, the lingerie, right away, oh, my God, how scandalous can that be? Covers the same amount. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And yes, I know what you're talking about. For those who don't know what Richard's talking about, he's talking about AEW All Elite Wrestling. There's a lot of women on there that wear mostly almost similar to what we wear. So he's sure. correct. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing too, man. And, it, and it's so funny. I even, I equate it to like, look at Invicta, Shannon Knapp's promotion with where Ronda Rousey and a lot of those girls train with Shayna Baszler and everything. Uh -huh. And look at the lingerie fighting the football league, for God's sake. And I mean, yeah. look at Ty Emery. She just came off her bare knuckle fighting debut and she flashed the crowd, Richard. Yes. Yes, I heard. Oh, I heard this. You know, but if they do that at LFC, oh my God, how scandalous. <laughs> it's the standards, folks. It's the standards. Oh, God. Double standards exist everywhere. 
Yes, they do, sir. It exists everywhere, you know? But I say, I got to say, I wouldn't have it any other way. And for those who have not checked out Lingerie Fighting Championships, what are you doing? Go to LFCFights.com. Check out the YouTube. Check out this man's photography. Shout out <laughs> Labor Guard, baby. I'm talking <laughs> with the Labor Guard. There you go. Labor Guard, yeah. Buddy. Check out the great photos that Richard does and check out his stuff in the calendar with Tomiko, the Temptress, the and all the lovely ladies and the pets of the LFC calendar. The Richard. The LFC. Kudos <laughs> once more for the idea, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it, was a, it, was a, it was an enjoyable idea and I enjoyed watching it put together and glad that I got two pets in there. So got, got Pops and I got my uh, previous dog, Ozzy, that unfortunately is no longer with us, but he was in there. He made it with uh, Gen Rep, I believe. The month of August, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and God rest his soul. Cute dog, by the way, once more. Oh, he was. Oh. He was another great dog. Another mm -hmm. great dog, you know? Well, they say the dogs take the personality of your owners. So when you got great dogs, it means you got great owners. That is very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will say this. We got to talk about your nerdiness for your second here. Yeah. You and your Marvel. Folks, besides the fact that we talk about Richie being a sharp-dressed man, Richie, you and your Marvel, you and your superheroes, your, your cons and everything. You Man, you yeah. get the hell out of these superhero gears, man. Hey, it's it's something I enjoy doing in my pastime, you know? It's like going out and meeting people, meeting people with the same interest. And, uh, you know, when I started all this stuff, that was way back in high school in the, uh, in the mid to late 70s. And... You could get beat up for liking Star, liking Star Trek at the time, you know? If you said, oh, I like Star Trek and I'm going to a con, you know, the, the cool kids will beat you up. These days now, going to the con is the cool kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I always say nerds rule the world, Richie. Nerds rule oh, the they world. Will. They do for sure, man. They do for sure. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the thing, too. And like you mentioned, like in the 70s and 80s, like it looked like Revenge of the Nerds or Robert Carradine and all those movies. Yeah. It's funny to think about like stuff that everybody thought was not cool back in the day. And it's cool now to the forefront because there's so many cons, whether it be Comic Con, Fetish Con, what have you. There's so many different uniqueness and preferences that people yes, have. Yes, that people happen. It, it's, and some of these cons are amazing. Like, you know, I understand a Star Trek convention. It's been around... 50 plus, 55 years, numerous TV shows, numerous movies. And then you turn around and you have a supernatural con. Mm -hmm. One TV show that was on for four years and that's it. No movies, no, no spinoffs, no nothing. And yet they attract people. You know, it's the people's interest and it's great. It's great that people can go out there and have their interest and, you know, be able to explore it without being ridiculed, attacked, or anything else. And you know, it's, you know, if people wear their Star Trek outfit and people wear their Superman outfit and people wear their Captain America outfit and people wear their football jerseys and people wear their hockey jer hockey sweaters. It, I equate it to the same thing. It's you're just showing your love for that particular thing. It's all about being the representation of your presentation. And one of the things I love about that too is, and I, I'll tell you this, like I've told everybody, like I, when I was in the ring for those two, for the ring announcing, right? Like, mind you, I do this and I'm in front of all these people. Here's what I love about it too. You realize like yourself, the importance that you have and everything that goes in the LFC, what the ring announcer has, what the judges have, the commentary. It's all about making the best representation of your presentation. Cause there's a lot of work that goes into the production. And I think it's wonderful. It's just what we get to see from the respect side of things and just overall being humble of what we do and everything we do in life, Richie. Yeah. Well, humble is not a word that's often associated with me, but, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's being, it's doing what you do and loving what you do. You know, you can't be a ring announcer for an event you don't like, right? Because you're not going to give it the energy that you are for an event that you like, right? And it's the same thing with anything else. You know, I do weddings. I, I let me rephrase that. I used to do weddings, um, and I gave it my best shot, and I got amazing images. But I never felt the love that I do when I do like a uh, combat sports photography. You know, I just got more of a love for that. And it shows through on my pictures, I think. I think it does, too, as well. And here's the thing what I love about it, whatever craft that it is, because what it is, it's, a, it's an art form. What I love about the combat sport nature is, too, and... 
it's just it's the grit it's the discipline it's the passion that goes into it and there's nothing like it richard there's nothing right oh no there's nothing like it at all there's nothing like it at all and when you you know some of these undercard fights when you realize the fighter is getting his brains beat out or beating out the brains of somebody else for maybe five hundred dollars maybe if they're lucky so you know that they're in it for the love of the sport you know uh it used to be that way, you know, in a lot of the uh, more professional sports. Hockey, I think it's still that. They're still in it for the love of the sport. But some of these other sports, I think they've just gone too much for the love of the money. And they don't care about the sport anymore. Especially baseball. $115 million contracts for five years. I heard, yep. <laughs> like, that's, that's ludicrous. Absolutely. That is ludicrous, you know. I hear you. And well, that, well, that's the thing too. We're over consumed now instead of just like the love. It's all it, it, obviously money. It's important, but everybody oh, yeah. wants the money. And that's the thing. You Nobody really understands like the love just of actually loving it, you know? Yeah. Of loving, of doing it. Like you wonder at that point if they still love the sport. If you tell them, oh, guess what? Across Major League Baseball, we're cutting everybody's salary by 50%. How many of them would stay in the sport because they love the sport? Mm -hmm. Now, I understand, of course, that the owners get rich off of these people's work and they deserve to be compensated for that instead of all the money going to the owner, which I understand fully. Um, but there's a limit. To me, there's a limit. There's a limit to how much it's worth when you can't afford to go to a hockey, when well, not you personally, but uh, average Joe can't afford to go to a hockey game or a baseball game or a football game because the ticket is six hundred dollars, so they can pay somebody fifteen million dollars. Then there's that's where the disconnect comes in, I believe. Me too, and and that's the thing I see so much when it comes to different sports. And it's funny, like we talk about the money and everybody getting their brains beat in. It's like when there was a time in wrestling where the role of the enhancement talent is pretty much here's your five hundred bucks. You're gonna face the big top star, and it'll be a squash. You know, you come in, they're gonna beat you at one, two, three. That's the thing that we've had in wrestling, and it's coming back towards now, which is great because you get to see how much the importance of an enhancement talent is to really make that person look good. So there's stuff like that that is coming back that we had back in the old days so like what's old is new and what's new is old again so right. there's stuff like that like where you have the formula where it works to get that person over in the story or just a person over in general within sports and so it all kind of brings the camaraderie back to it well it does it does but i, I was looking at this the other day also i had a discussion with sean and other people back in the 80s everybody knew who the heavyweight champion of the world was he was mike tyson Yes. Whether you follow boxing, didn't follow boxing, didn't know two scraps about boxing, you knew the heavyweight champion of the world. Right. Everybody in the whole world knew Joe, uh, whole world. North America knew Joe Namath. Uh -huh. Whether you knew anything about football, didn't know anything about football, you knew Joe Namath. Uh -huh. You knew Hulk Hogan. Yes. You knew Rowdy Roddy Piper. Uh -huh. Right? Yep. You knew, uh, going a bit older, you knew Joe DiMaggio. You knew Sandy Koufax. You knew these guys. You could have absolute zero interest in the sport, yet you still knew these people. Today, if you have zero interest in the sport, you know nobody. And it's interesting you bring that up because, first of all, you and I last time on here, Richard and I were talking about Dino Bravo, for God's sake here, folks. Yeah. We were talking about good old Dino Bravo. Dino Bravo. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Yes, the tale that you got a good here. memory. I forgot that we were talking about. We Dino talked. Bravo. To, well, you and I were talking about Canadian wrestling here, the, you know, Bravo and the Stampede wrestling. With yeah. the Mets, yes, but that's that's the thing too. Like those were the territory days, and what different what we have now. But I think what the problem is with wrestling, and I love wrestling, and you and I have talked about this. And I think for those that know me, know I love wrestling. But the thing here that's different is, like you mentioned, we knew who Hulk Hogan was, we knew who Roddy Piper was. And how wrestling has kind of changed from when we had the Attitude Era with the Rocks, the Stone Colds, the Undertakers, and all these people. Now it's just like, and it's just, it feels different because everything is more focused. Nobody goes into the storytelling and how we get to everything. It's just, oh, here are these two people. Go ahead. But what if I don't yeah. know about these two people? Give me people. some reason that I should care about these well, people. I've tried to watch professional wrestling at, because, you know, of the LFC, I go, I should watch this and see what's going yes. on. And I, I turn on the TV. 
20 minutes in and I still haven't seen a match. And 30 minutes in and I still haven't seen a match. And in an hour, I see maybe one match of two people. I have no idea who they are. Yes. And realize that they couldn't hold Hulk Hogan's coffee cup. Yes. And I don't mean to laugh. You know, they, because couldn't hold, they, couldn't hold, they couldn't hold Rowdy Roddy Piper, man. The, back in February of this year, I was at a trade show here in Vegas. And I met the million dollar man. Yes. Ted DiBiase. <laughs> yes. You know, and, and I knew he, he, who he was. You know, and everybody knew at the convention knew who he was. Mm -hmm. Take one of today's wrestlers. I don't I can't even give you a name of today's wrestler and put them at that convention and they would have been ignored. I'm trying to think. It's very interesting. Well, today's day and age, everybody knows Roman Reigns, cousin of the Rock. He's a big star in WWE. AEW, there's MJF because he has that very much old school heel like a Piper back in the day. But yeah, so the, here's the thing with the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. It didn't matter if he wrestled a great match. It's that character was over. It was the million dollar yeah. man. He worked yeah. it. He worked it. Yeah. The mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. He worked it. Uh -huh. He worked it. Like he'd be out there every match. You knew he was in the building. Mm -hmm. You heard him. He was in the building. Even if he wasn't on the screen, he was in the building. You, you don't have those characters today. And the and issue, now, of course, the big news that just came out of the WWE a few hours ago. Yeah, with the Vince McMahon. Thing. Well, not only that, but it's, they sold the company to the Saudis. Saudis, yes, that's the that's the thing going around with that. Oh, and I'm going to say this right now. As a wrestling fan, that just, it gets me right here, number one, but also number two, it's just like, I feel dirty, man. It's just, it's so dirty, and it's just so wrong. I just shook my head as soon as I saw it, Richard. Oh, it it, it hurts. It hurts, Richard. It hurts. Well, it's, uh, they're the ones with the money these days. They are. And, um, you know, hopefully this money will trickle down to the fighters, mm -hmm. give them better paydays, give them health insurance, give them a pension. Give them something, because as you and I know, uh, whether it's boxing, wrestling, MMA, kickboxing, once your fighting days are over, you got nothing left. You've got no pension. You've got no health insurance. Good luck getting health insurance for the five concussions you had uh, that you got while fighting. Huh? It's you know, hopefully that's going to signal a change in the in the way the the uh, talent is treated. I'm right there with you. And, and and it's one of those things, too. And first of all, like there's so many people now, especially nowadays with how the wrestling style has changed. Everybody's doing too much or they're, they're getting concussions. They're getting hurt, whether it be whatever body part, whether it be a broken neck, what have you. Everybody just does too much. And I think the other issue is slow it down, work harder, work smarter, not harder, but also at the same time, be safe, be spectacular, but also, you know, just take care of yourself. That's what we all need to do is just take care of ourselves, Richie. Well, yeah, of course. Of course, we, we have to set our own limits. We know what our limits are. We have to set our own limits. But like anything else, uh, wrestling or whatever, uh, what was how, how that one will go? Uh, harder, stronger, faster? Yes. Harder, um, stronger, faster. Yep. You know, they, they, they're trying to push the envelope at every match to keep it more entertaining, forgetting the fact that the entertainment comes from the actual talent of the wrestler. Mm -hmm. If they know how to wrestle, they don't need a cage match. They don't got to jump from the top of a 20 foot step ladder. You know, they don't have to do any of that crazy stuff if they know how to actually do the sport. Amen to My that. Opinion. No, amen My to opinion. that. A lot of people have that same opinion. I'll say amen to that. I think it's not just the old school style as well, but what I saw with LFC and how they do it, Bella Madison has a character. Sheen Bathory has a character. Jenny has a character. Jolene has a character. Everybody there, great talent, but their characters are in it and engages with the audience. And that's what makes our product special. Yeah. Yeah. It, but also, they're all good fighters. Yes. You know, they're all good fighters. No one is there just because they're a pretty face. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a lot of pretty faces, yes, and each and every one of them is going to beat the shit out of you <laughs> because they know how to fight. They know how to wrestle. They know how to grapple. They know how to MMA. They know how to box. They know how to do something to keep themselves alive in the ring. Yeah, talk or about their age or whatever they're yes. we happen to be in at, at that particular moment. I like how you said that ring or cage. <laughs> 
depending on how we're hit. That's right. <laughs> well, I hope they go back to the cage. Oh, uh, see, that's the debate that we had on the show a little while ago. We got to talk about this. Okay, you brought up a great point. A lot of people that don't like the ring, and some people prefer the cage. I'll be honest with you. I've been in the ring twice. I like it, but also at the same time, the cage is different because it has that feel. It's just something different than just taking the bumps on the mat and in the cage. It's a different aura, Richie. It's a different aura. Oh, it's a different aura. I, I know. Of course, as a photographer, I prefer the ring. Yes. Shooting through that little hole in the cage is it's irritating to all end, you know, but there's something against when the fighter is thrown against the cage and that metal rattles. And you know that, holy shit, that must have fucking hurt because there is no give in the metal panels of a cage the way there is in the ropes of a ring. Uh -huh. Now, of course, you don't get the opportunity to jump on the third rope and flip over somebody, but grab them in a, in a spin and slam them into the cage. Uh -huh. It's completely different. You know, to me, it's a completely different, a completely different style of fighting. And a champion in the ring might not be a champion in the cage. There might be somebody there who's a better cage fighter than ring fighter. And it's so interesting now with today's upstarts, and I got to bring this up because this has been a topic amongst a lot of people, especially in the news, Richard, like Logan Paul went to did some boxing. Now he's doing the WWE. Jake Paul looking to get into boxing. There was that thing he had with Andrew Tate, who was looking to get the box. They were putting that on. What are your thoughts about what we got going on with like guys like Jake Paul getting into there and Andrew Tate? What do you think about those people? Very controversial figures, but they've really made a lot of noise. You know, they made a lot of noise. Um, I have to give. Jake Paul credit. He's the one with the more fights, right? Logan yes. is the yeah. yeah, he's the one with the more fights. Yep. He's actually improving as a fighter and he is taking it seriously. He is training. So I will give him credit on that. He parlayed his 1 million plus whatever it is YouTube viewers into actual following him in boxing and boxing fans. Where it's a detriment to the sport is now the big promoters are looking to make fights based on social media following, not based on quality of fighter. So they saw the success of Logan Paul uh, and Jake Paul, and I give them kudos. Like, is it an embarrassment to the sport? It's an embarrassment that the sport had to go that way to find new fans. Right? So there's something inherently wrong in the sport of MMA, boxing, wrestling, where an outsider has to come in to popularize your sport. So there's an inherent problem there. The fact that now the big promoters are trying to do that same type of social media thing is a mistake also. The fact that fighters are picking and choosing who they can fight is a mistake. And this is, again, it's all just personal opinion. You know, but Ali fought Fraser three times. They had a fight where neither of them were champions, and it was one of the most watched fights ever. Because you had two good fighters going at it. Right? Now... You hear, we're still waiting for the uh, Spence Crawford fight. It's been three years that they're talking about fighting each other. It took Mayweather how long to fight Pacquiao? Uh -huh. Back in the day, before you were born, so 30-odd years ago, that fight would have been made, and that fight would have been at Caesars Palace, and the whole flipping world would have been tuned in to watch. So there's that inherent problem in the sport. And, you know, I like I said, kudos to, to the Paul brothers. They parlayed their one million into billions of dollars on this. And congratulations to them. The sport, fix yourself so that you don't have to rely on this to make yourselves relevant. 
I got to say, and I will say this, you actually brought up a great point because watching Logan Paul, he uh, came in wrestling Saudi against Roman Reigns for the title. I will say this, had a hell of a performance, but one of the key factors going to the story was also promote Logan Paul's social media because everybody was talking. It brings more eyes to the WWE because he has this following, and that's the day and age we're in. It doesn't matter right. if it's quality or anything. It's all about do you have the views, do you have the likes, do you have Right, the- but if he brings these fight, these these eyes, if he yes. brings the eyeballs to the event, Correct. And somebody said, oh, great. And then the next week they go, oh, look, there's a wrestling event on TV. You know, we saw that Logan Paul stuff. Let's turn it on. Yep. And they turn it on and they get <laughs> what, what I saw the other night. Yep. You've lost those eyeballs. You, 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 you've got Jake Paul bringing in these, these eyeballs to the view to watch boxing. And you can't give them Spence Crawford? I feel you. It's where we are today in the day and age of combat sports. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But I will say this. Speaking of combat sports and badassery, we have to talk about our girl here, Mr. Richard. We got to talk about Jolene Hex. Champ, champ, champ. Dude, her and Jenny killed the last one. She's got all the bells. She's got all the gold. Mr. She's got all the gold. Yeah, all, all the bling. All the bling. The blingage. Now, I am really excited to see where we go for LFC 37 because we got the LFC title, European title, and the blingage, that is the booty camp champ chain. It's all in the pink team, Richard. It's all in the pink team, but I don't know uh, which, if any, championships will be up. It's not a booty camp fight, so I don't think the booty camp belt, the booty camp chain will be up. Uh, it's not in Europe, so I don't think the European uh, belt will be uh will be in play um whether or not it's going to be a championship fight i guess it's going to depend on who sean can find to um to match her against and if there is a if there is a competitor available to uh fight her for that for that title and unfortunately i'm not privy to that <laughs> like i don't have any information on whether or not there is going to be a championship match uh, whether or not Jolene is fighting or not, I really don't know. So it's going to be interesting to watch. Absolutely is. I think at her short time back, we have had Jolene absolutely kill it on all cylinders. Same with all these ladies. And it is going to be an event you don't want to miss once more. LFC 37, back to the mansion. Champagne wishes, caviar <laughs> dreams, taking it back to Robin Leach, baby. Oh. There you go. All righty. Now, folks, go out of your way, see it. It's Valentine's Day. And what a better way to spend on Valentine's Day, not just with LFC, but love is in the air and fighting is in the air. And we love to fight, don't we, Richard? We do. We do. And uh, again, for all you guys out there, um, this is a by invitation only fight. You can't buy tickets to it. So if you want to go to the fight, you got to join up on the uh, LFCfights.com VIP membership to even be eligible for a chance to be at those fights. You know, so... It's gonna. It, it's a special, like special pay per view, special everything. There's a. Uh, they're hitting the big time. They're hitting the big time. Yes, sir. I will say this: LFCfights.com. Become a VIP member. Get yourself to the event. If you can't watch it on the website, there's many different ways to watch LFC 37 back to the match and see this man's face taking the photos. Little clicks. <laughs> yes. I'll be the short, uh, short old guy by the uh, at the edge of the ring there. Uh... <laughs> With the big camera in hand, yeah. <laughs> Richard, I love you to death, my friend. And I'm going to say this right now before we close this out. And we're going to definitely do another round of this, man. I always love getting you on the show and getting your opinions. You're one of the best people that I know, my friend. I love you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I I appreciate that. You're going to make me blush, Mike. You're going to make me uh, blush on, uh, on camera here. It's all love. It's all love. And before we close this out, man, you got yourself a Twitter. You're on the Instagram. You're doing your thing at Ravel Gear Boxing. Where can we find you, Richard? Okay, well, you can find me definitely on Instagram under uh, Richard Amber Photo, and that's my main social media. As a photographer, Instagram is my main social media. Uh, my Facebook is private, so don't even look for me there. <laughs> You're not going to find me. <laughs> uh, I'm not on Twitter that much, and I still don't do TikTok, Snapchat, uh, or any of those other newfangled uh newfangled social media things uh i haven't gone to parlor yet uh, <laughs> or truth social i won't be on any of those for a while so uh <laughs> yeah just, your best bet is uh definitely to find uh 
find me uh, at Richard Amber Photo. Find Rival Boxing Gear on uh, on Instagram. You can always follow us there. Um, yeah, that's about it. My website, uh, lerigard.com, L-E hyphen R-E-G-A-R-D.com. Links will be should update. Probably haven't updated in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Links will be in the description. I don't mean to laugh, but you literally went through almost like every friggin' social media there is out there. I was waiting for MySpace, Richard. We're gonna take oh, MySpace. I would be on MySpace. MySpace. At least I got a cover song when I was on MySpace. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. So uh, links will be in the description for Labor Guard Photo, Instagram for Richard, and the Instagram for Rival Gear Boxing. And Richard, do you have any final words for the LFC universe as we close this thing thing out? Yeah. 2022 is going to be a big year. Don't miss it. Get yourself over to lfcfights.com. Sign up as a VIP member. The things that are in store, uh, trust me on this. I've heard some. Uh, Heard some rumors, had lunch with the CEO, uh, supper actually this, with the CEO and the president. So uh, both uh, Sean and Holly May uh, had supper with them. And uh, there are plans in the works that you're not going to want to miss. Beautifully said. 2022, now into 2023. What a year. Oh, 2023, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm For just, now we're in 2023. Jesus. It's all good, man. It's all good. From the calendar year, well, perfect segue. Calendar year 2022. Go back and watch LFC 36 Booty Camp 4. 2023, it's LFC 37 back to the mansion. We in here, we in there. Big things popping, little things stopping. It's LFC, baby. And as I always say <laughs> to close this show, beauty straight the dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art they, that they are. And Richard Ember, takes the photos of those amazing ladies we will see you. we will see you at lfc 37 richard thank you so much as always my pleasure thank you for having me mike always a pleasure to do your show bye everybody fine, fine, fine. Gonna kick some-